Scientists have been tracking youth held in the juvenile justice system and comparable youth transferred to the adult criminal justice system. What they found was that youth who had been transferred to the adult criminal justice system were much more likely to reoffend and reoffend more quickly and at a higher offense rate. Because adolescents' executive functions are not mature, their capacities for planning, for anticipating future consequences, and for impulse control are deficient as compared with those of adults. At a time when their inclination to engage in risk-taking behavior in the company of peers is greater than it will be in a few years. When you put adolescents into adult facilities, the type of stimulation that the brain needs is generally not available. So there's, there's almost an atrophying of the brain. And so some of the logical reasoning what we think about adult development is lacking. Brain and behavioral research over the past 10 years indicates that adolescents have not fully developed their capacity to think and to learn and to reason. This indicates that incarcerating and prosecuting them as adults not only doesn't serve the purpose of reducing recidivism, but studies actually show that it may make recidivism happen more quickly and more often. My whole case while I'm here is just it's dumb, like, because it was my first time ever here. I think they should give me a second chance. And if you're 17, you're not an adult yet, and you should stay in the juvenile system. The Superior Court said a child at 16 is not fully developed. That's one of the reasons why they banned the ability to put a child to death. And they concluded that a child at 16 is not an adult, so why can't we do that also? One of the challenges is that we don't know what the developmental effects are of having a cohort or a group of children growing up in an adult prison or an adult facility during this critical teenage years, these critical developmental times, as compared to being in a more rehabilitation-oriented, developmentally appropriate facility that we might find in the juvenile justice system. Youth and their families, who are most affected by these laws, are organizing along with their communities. They are educating state policymakers. They want reform. Here's what you can do. We need to stand together as a group of individuals. If there are 2.3 million people in jail in this country and another 4 million on parole or probation, then there are lots of families out there and there are a lot more of us than there are of them. And if we just stood together, I think we could make a huge difference. We could start a wave of reform in this country that would make a real difference. So we would not only be helping the folks on the inside, we'd be helping all of us on the outside and we could build a much better world. We could put a voice and a face and a family to the statistics. We need to put a personal note to it. And I would encourage parents that think they don't want to hear from me. Oh yes, they do need to hear from you. It, it doesn't help the situation. There are other parents out there who are speaking forward find their voice and you will find your voice. This is a law that makes no sense. It's just way too easy to land in jail. It, it took a big uh, thing in our lives to make me come out and speak. And I, I hope other parents don't wait that long. We have the power within ourselves. We have the potential. And yes, we oftentimes end up in situations where people feel a need to come and rescue us, but we have to be our own rescuers. We have to save ourselves and liberate ourselves. And that's an important lesson. We have to know that we have it within ourselves to change our situation and improve our communities. I just don't understand why as soon as a child commits a crime, they become unworthy and they become throwaways. We need to hear from you. Other parents would encourage, I encourage any parent to step up and speak out. As the parent of a child incarcerated at the age of 13 in one of the most brutal juvenile facilities in this country, it is important for me to share my message with other parents that there is a way to get involved and to change things, that we are not powerless to these systems if we join together. And it's important also for me to share with other parents that we can become the family or we can become the folks in their lives, their network, to help them get through these ordeals. We need to get involved and step up as elders, as community leaders, as students, and play our role in this campaign. If you want to keep 
your family's safe, if you want to have a say in your children's future, then you really need to join this movement to treat our kids as kids should be treated. I urge you to join the movement. I urge you to become a member of the Campaign for Youth Justice. Visit the website, look at the different cities and the different states that we are working in right now, and look at how you can affect your own community. The time for change is now, and the only way that we could truly affect change is by becoming involved. Don't let this message end with you. Pass this video on to friends, family, and co-workers. Anyone can become an advocate. To learn more about how to get involved, contact the Campaign for Youth Justice. Call 202-558-3580.